Man, you know, I really want to discuss the starting backfield for the Houston Texans. Being the starting quarterback and wide receiver, and then really going over an overview of how I think, you know, they've done so far and how they should go on in the preseason. Started with Tyron Taylor. Now, we only saw one drive. We saw him go 4 for 4, 40 yards through the air, hit Mark, uh, I'm sorry, hit Chris Conley multiple times speaking of Chris Conley I think the little chemistry that they had going worked damn good Chris Conley looked like a guy who earned his spot for the season you know we you know we had questions of who will be the guy alongside of Brandon Cooks is it gonna be Nico Collins who I would love for it to be Chris Conley definitely showed that hey he can be a number two wide receiver he definitely looked good you know, was able to do a tiptoe, you know, it, you know, at the sideline multiple times, you know, even caught a pass from Davis Mills. Chris Conley might be something, but going back to Tyrod Taylor, you know, he looked good. You know, in this small sample size, this is what you wanted to see from Tyrod Taylor. I love the way they called plays, right? Getting him in play action so they can also use that element of his legs to buy more times because these wide receivers for the Houston Texans, they're, they are going to be shifty, including Anthony Miller. That guy's going to be dangerous if he stays healthy for the Houston Texans. Giving these guys time to get opens and then having the opportunity to use his, le- you know, to use his legs to get the first down. This is how you're gonna, you know. This is how you have to use Tyrod Taylor. It's what they were doing with Deshaun Watson, and I think that's the best way to do it. And then when Lermy Tunsil comes back, and then Titus Howard gets back, really see how this offensive line can absolutely go. But so far, I love what they did with Tyrod Taylor in this first set. You know, in this first set of plays for the Houston Texans. Like I said before, Jeff Jesko shouldn't even be on this team. Was an abysmal one for six. Did not look good whatsoever. Looked better as a run blocker than a quarterback. You know, he's taking away reps from Davis Mills. Even if it's with the four strings, you want to give Davis Mills all the type of reps that he's not going to get in the regular season. He's going to be going from getting you know, the first team reps in games, maybe in practices these next two weeks than what he's going to get all season this upcoming season, guys. Davis Mills, I think, showed some things that he could be a good QB. Definitely has some horrible moments. But I, I, I need to see more of him. I would love to see more of him game two. I would love to see him have the whole game three. Going on into the running back portion, I think we saw something different. You know, we saw them starting with Philip Lindsay, which was a bit strange because we heard that when the ones were out there that David Johnson was the starter running back, right? They're still trying to keep that dream alive, you know, still trying to keep that Bill O'Brien era alive. And David Johnson himself had an opportunity at 31, absolutely failed. But before I go on on David Johnson, Philip Lindsay looked good. You saw... The elusiveness, the shiftiness, the wiggleness, the burst of speed, the speed there for Philip Lindsay. We haven't seen that, you know, from a Houston Texan running back in a very long time. Someone of that caliber could get a thousand yards for the Houston Texans. The only, you know, the only thing holding back Philip Lindsay isn't Mark Ingram. I think Philip Lindsay and Mark Ingram can be a damn good one-two tandem. I can see situations where Philip Lindsay helps the Houston Texans get a league, and Mark Ingram helps the Houston Texans secure it. You know, I really think the only player holding this running back group back as a whole is David Johnson himself. Because he has people pulling for him on the inside, being Jack Eastby. Who knows how Nick Casario feels at that at the moment. But if you just got a fifth-round pick from Keon Cross and who you traded today, what can you get for David Johnson? You know, you know that he's not... The first, maybe second, maybe even third best talented running back on this team. And that's because Scotty Phillips played damn good this game against the Green Bay Packers. 67 yards in a touchdown. The only element that David Johnson brings aside from running the ball that I think the others cannot is the pass catching, right? He is one of the best pass catcher running backs, you know, in the NFL 
A lot of people are wanting him to switch to tight end. You know, last year he would have been our tallest wide receiver. This running back group, I think, has potential to be a, you know, as a tandem or as a trio, you know, a 16, 1700 yard type of team. You know, maybe Philip Lindsay could get you to 1,000 yards. Maybe Mark Egan could get you four or 500, but give you eight, nine touchdowns. The potential is there. It's just, what are they going to do with David Johnson? But let me know what you guys think, guys. As always, go Houston Texans. You guys have a blessed day.